So recall what it means to be relatively prime. So let a and b be any two integers, not both zero. Then a and b are said to be relatively prime if the greatest common divisor of a and b is one. So that's relatively prime. That concerns uh, two integers. What about just one integer? What about a prime integer? So let's look at the definition of prime integers. Let p be an integer such that p is greater than one. Then p is said to be prime if its only positive divisors are one and p itself. So a few things to note here. The definition only applies to positive integers. If we look at the definition, we have p is greater than one. So in particular, one is not prime. And natural numbers, which is uh, what positive integ integers are, natural numbers are not prime. Th those ones are said to be composite. So uh, to give an example here, we know that something like 12, that has as its divisors a whole bunch of things. It has one, two, three, four, six, and 12. So this would be composite. Well, 13, on the other hand, if we look at the divisors of 13, it's just 1 and 13. So 13 would be prime. So now I want to look at something called Euclid's lemma. And this says, uh, let a and b be any integers. And if p is prime, and if p divides a times b, then either p divides a or p divides b. And this is the same Euclid that you probably know from geometry. And if we wanted to uh, look at an example of this, let's say uh, two divides 12. Okay, so two we know is prime. The only positive divisors of two are one and two. And so if two divides 12, that means that two divides three times four. It's just another way of writing 12. And so Euclid's lemma would say that that means that either two divides three or two divides four. And in this case, we happen to know that, yes, two does divide four, two does not divide three. So Euclid's lemma works, but be careful because remember that it only works if P is a prime number. Six divides 12, so that means that six divides three times four. Does that mean that six divides three or six divides four? Well, in this case, no, neither of those are true, but that's okay because remember that six is not a prime number and this lemma only applies when p is prime. So how would we go about proving Euclid's lemma? Well, in this case, uh, let's try and see if we can figure out uh, you know, what we know, what we're given here. So we know that p is prime and p divides a times b. Okay, so that's a couple things here. So we know p divides a times b, so that means that a times b equals k times p, where k is some integer. So for some integer k. That's what it means for something to divide something else. Okay, now what else can we say? Well, we also know that p is prime. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that means that the only positive divisors of p are one and p itself. And so we need to figure out uh, how we're going to prove an either or statement. So um, the goal here is we're trying to show that, I'll write it over here, the goal is we wanna show that either P divides A or P divides B. So when we have an or statement here, uh, the, it's best to kind of consider these separately. So let's suppose that P div did divide A. Well, then we'd be done. We'd be proving what we need to prove and everything would be fine. So let's suppose now that that's not the case. P does not divide A. Then our goal becomes this. We just have to show that P divides B. Okay, well, if P doesn't divide A, so let's think about that. We know P is prime, so the only positive divisors of P are one and P itself. So what would the greatest common divisor of P and A be? Let's think about that. So, um, well, the divisors of P, well, that's just one or P itself, but we know that P does not divide A. We saw that here. So that tells us that the greatest common divisor between these things must be one. In other words, they're relatively prime. 
And if you remember earlier, we said that if a and b are relatively prime integers, and a divides b times c, where c is some other integer, then a divides c. I can rewrite that in terms of the letters we're using here. Let p and a be relatively prime integers. That's what we have right here. p and a are relatively prime. And suppose that p divides a, b. Well, that's what I have right here. Okay. And then we can say with these two things that p divides b. Well, p divides b is what we were trying to show right here, the goal. So this little uh, idea that we had in a previous video actually comes in very handy here to prove what we're trying to prove uh, for Euclid's lemma. So let's try and turn this now into a formal proof. Okay, so here's Euclid's lemma. And let's look at a formal proof. So let a and b be any two integers, and let p be a prime number, and suppose that p divides a times b. Well, if p divides a, then we're done, because that's one of the things we're trying to prove here. Either p divides a or p divides b. So let's suppose now that p does not divide a. So now we have to show that p divides b, because it has to divide either a or b. Well, since p is prime, the only positive divisors of p are 1 and p itself. Therefore, the greatest common divisor of p and a is either 1 or p. But p does not divide a. So we know that the greatest common divisor of p and a has to be 1. Thus, p and a are relatively prime. And then we had this result from an earlier video that says if p and a are relatively prime integers and p divides a times b, then we know p divides b. So we can conclude that since p divides a times b, we must have p dividing b, and we're done. Now we can generalize Euclid's lemma. We had uh, p dividing a product of two things, but we could look at uh, a whole bunch of things multiplied together. So let a1, a2, all the way up to a sub n be integers. And if p is a prime number, and if p divides the product of all of those, then p must divide a sub i for some i with 1 being less than or equal to i being less than or equal to n. In other words, if p divides a product, then it must divide one of the factors. Okay, so how can we prove something like this? Well, now that we have a whole bunch of integers here, we have n of them, uh, when you have something that depends on n, a positive integer n, some statement that depends on n, a good way to prove it is using mathematical induction. So that was where we had a statement about a positive integer n, that's what we have here, and we need to show two things, that p of one is true, and then if p of k is true, that p of k plus one is true. So this first part here, p of 1, we call that the base case. So let's look at the base case first and see if that makes any sense. So we have uh, for n equals 1. Well, that would say that uh, p would divide a sub 1, since you know there's only one integer here. Uh, then p divides, well, that's kind of trivial. p divides a1. We're done. So that wasn't very exciting. Maybe we should try n equals 2 just to see what happens there. Uh, so that would say then that p divides a1 times a2. And we would need to show then that either uh, p divides a1 or p divides a2 in order to prove this generalization. But these things here, this is just Euclid's lemma that we just showed here. And so uh, we can say right off right off the bat here that p divides a1 or p divides a2 because we just had that in the previous slide. So that's, that is Euclid's lemma with two things right there. All right, so now I think we need to move on to the general case. So this is the induction step. So in order to do the induction step, we assume that the statement is true when n equals k. So if we have n equals k, we're going to say it works. And we want to show it for k plus 1. Well, for k plus 1, we would have something like a1, a2, all the way up to a k, and then a k plus 1. So suppose that p divides this product right here. We need to show that p divides one of these factors. So I'm going to say, let's kind of group it together like this. So I'll look at all of this together times uh, a k plus 1. 
So this whole thing right here, that's just some integer. So by Euclid's lemma, we can think of this as uh, two integers really multiplied together, because if you multiply a whole bunch of integers together, you're going to get another integer. So that tells us by Euclid's lemma that either P divides this first part, which goes all the way up to A sub K, or P divides A sub K plus 1. Okay, well, if P divides A sub K plus 1, then we're done, because we then would have shown that P divided A sub I for some I in this uh, range here. Uh, but what about the top case? Well, this is the induction step. We said it was true when N equaled K. And so this means that P has to divide one of these factors right here. And so then, by mathematical induction, we can say that this must be true uh, for all N that are in the set of positive integers. Okay, so let's do a formal proof now of this generalization of Euclid's lemma. So the proof would look like this. Let a sub one, a sub two, all the way up to a sub n be integers. Let p be a prime number and let p divide the product of all of these integers. And we're gonna use mathematical induction on n. So first, we looked at the n equals one case. Well, that's not very exciting. Then p divides a sub one and we're done. For n equals two, then p divides a sub one times a sub two. And we uh, saw by Euclid's lemma then that that means either p divides a sub one or p divides a sub two. And again, we're done. Now let's assume that it's true for n equals k. So that means that P divides a sub one, a sub two, times all of these things multiplied together up to a sub k. Uh, so if that is true, then P must divide a sub i, where i now is uh, between one and k here. And we wanna show it for k plus one. So let's consider now uh, P dividing uh, all of these integers, and then we're gonna tack on a sub k plus one. Well then by Euclid's lemma, we know that either P divides A sub one all the way up to A sub K, or P divides A sub K plus one. Well if P divides A sub K plus one, then we're done, because then we've shown that P divides one of those factors. But if P divides the other thing, the product of them, then by the induction hypothesis, we know that it also has to divide one of the factors, and so we must be done.